Hi there guys, so I hope you're all doing well. Now let's continue the series of videos where we're looking at ZFS on Unraid. Now we've seen how we can convert a pool device to be formatted in ZFS and we've seen how within a data set we can auto convert the top level folders into data sets and manually take a snapshot. From the comments received in the last video, there's a lot of people looking forward to the next video where we're going to be automating snapshots and then replicating data from one zpool to another. Now I love ZFS replication, but some guys out there, some of you, you may not have two zpools. Now if you followed along in this series, then you've probably at least got one zpool at the moment, your cache drive is likely to be ZFS. And with any luck, all of your app data, that's being converted to data sets. So you're ready to start using some of ZFS's more advanced features. So in this video, we're going to add a second Z pool to the server. And for this, you're not going to need to buy any new disks for the server. The only thing you're going to have to have is more free space than the size of the smallest data drive in your array. Because what we're going to do is move all of the data off this disk onto the other drives in the array and then we're going to reformat this drive but we're going to do it without breaking parity or without losing data. And a zpool with just one disk is generally known as a single disk stripe. In normal ZFS this doesn't have any redundancy at all but because this drive is actually going to be part of the unraid array the unraid parity is actually going to protect the disk should it fail. Now obviously, a zpool with only one drive, you do lose a lot of the features of ZFS. You don't get automatic data healing, you don't get super fast speed, but we can use things like compression, encryption, and we can use it as a ZFS replication target to back up things. So in my opinion, it's really great to be able to have at least one ZFS disk inside your Unraid array. OK, I'm going to stop trying to explain now. I think it's much easier if we just jump right in, do it, and I'll show you as we go along. OK, so here we are back on the test server, and we've got these three XFS disks making up the array. Now, obviously, you can see there's not much data on them. This is just a test server. But what I want to do is I want to format disk 1 and have this as the ZFS disk. Now, at the moment, if we look, there are a few shares that are on this drive. So basically, we need to clear everything off because if I go and format this drive now, well, I'm going to lose this data. So we're going to need to install another plugin. So we need to go across to the Apps tab here and we want to do a search for Unbalance. So let's install this plugin. And with that done, we can close this window. Now, before I go and use this plugin, I'm just going to go to the Docker tab here and I'm going to make sure that all of these containers have stopped. I don't want anything using that disk one at all. And also the same with VMs. Just make sure all of those are stopped as well. Now, if for any reason, the disk that you want to reformat, if it had the system share on it, well, just like when we reformatted the cache drive, you'd have to actually stop the Docker service and stop the VM service. But normally you won't find the system share here, so I don't have to worry about it. Now there's another plugin we need to make sure we've got installed, and I'm sure most of you will probably have this anyway. It's the Fix Common Problems plugin. So just make sure that's installed. Now you might be wondering why we need this. Well, if we go across to the Tools tab here now, installing Fix Common Problems gives us Docker Safe new permissions. We're going to click onto that. And then I'm going to run this just to make sure all the permissions on my shares are as they should be. OK, so that didn't take very long for me. With a lot of data, obviously, it will take quite a long time. But when that's done, just click on to done. Then click on to settings, scroll down here. And here we can see unbalance. Let's click on to its icon. And at the moment, it's not enabled. So let's change no to yes. Click apply. And now we can open its web GUI here. So let's click onto the green writing. And here we can see the drives that I have in the server. Now what I want to do is use the setting here called scatter. And the drive I want to move everything off is disk one. So I'm going to check here from 
And then in the column here too, we can choose which drive the files from the from are scattered to. Now I don't want anything going onto the cache drive. I just want it on the other array drives. So these two drives are selected here. Now you see I've selected the drive. I also need to select the shares inside of there as well. So I've selected everything that's in disk one. I'm going to click on to plan now. And what planning does is just make sure it can fit everything where it needs to go and check the permissions are correct. So everything looks good here to me. So I'm going to untick dry run because I don't just want it to go through and do nothing. And we don't want to copy the files. We want to actually move them. So I'm going to click on to move here. And then we just let unbalance do its thing. We can see here for me, it's not going to take very long because there's only a tiny amount of data. But obviously for you guys, there's going to be more data. So it's going to take a lot longer. OK, so we can see it's all finished now. It took 17 minutes. All of the files are copied across. So I can close the unbalanced window now. And let's go back to the main tab. Click onto disk one and we can see some folders are left over. But going inside them, well, there's nothing there because all the data has been moved. So I'm just going to delete the folders. If you want to be 100 percent sure there's nothing in it, select them all. Click on to calculate and you can be double sure by checking the size. There's nothing there. So I'm going to click on to delete. And now that drive has been emptied. So what we can do now is we go back to the main tab. OK, so now it's time to shut down the array. But before I do that, I'm actually going to reset all of the disk stats here. This isn't any part of actually reformatting the drives. I just want to clear the stats here so everything's set to zero. So I can just mention how parity works and how reformatting the drives is not going to affect the parity. And so all of the read and writes are set to zero. Because when we reformat disk one in a different file system, the way parity works, it works on what's called the XOR algorithm, which basically just calculates whether the ones and zeros across all of the disks are either odd or even. If you want to know more about parity, then see my video here. So as far as the parity is concerned, reformatting is no different than if we added a bunch of files to disk one. And we can see that by seeing the various reads and writes as we go through the process. Anyway, let's scroll down and actually stop the array. And so with the array stopped now, I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to click maintenance mode and then start. This will start the array, but without mounting the disks. Now I'm going to select the disk, which I want to format. Now, obviously, make double sure you select the correct disk. Mine's disk one, so I'm going to click on to the name of the disk here. And because we're in maintenance mode here, we're able to erase the disk. Now I suggest you do that and click on to erase. Now here we have to type the name. So I'm going to type disk one and click on to proceed. And now we've erased the disk. There's no file format on it. We can see that it says the file system type is auto. So now I'm going to click on to done. I'm going to scroll back down and now I'm going to stop the array here. And now with the array stopped, I'm going to go back to the disk here, click on to its name. And now because it's not in maintenance mode, I can choose a file system. Now remember, you can choose any file system you want. It doesn't just have to be CFS. Maybe you want to reformat your array disks to be encrypted and you want to use XFS encrypted. Maybe you want your CFS disk to be Luke's encrypted. So you'd select this one. I want mine just to be regular CFS and I'm going to enable the compression. So with that done, I'm going to click on to apply and done. We can see here the file system is going to be CFS. So let's scroll down and start the array. Now, as the array starts, it's going to ask us to format the disk. That's perfectly normal. So check the checkbox here. You can ignore this warning and click on to format. And this will now format for me my drive in ZFS. We can see here that it's formatting and we'll see the writes jump right up on this drive in a minute. We can see here the reads and writes changing on this disk and we can see the parity writes go up. I'm not sure if you saw that there. So our disk is now ZFS, our parity is valid and we've lost no data. Now, if you want to, you could just run a parity sync if you wanted to be 100% sure. I'm not actually going to do that. 
but I'm just going to quickly run maybe just a minute or two just to show you that there's no errors when it first runs. We can see here there's no sync errors because we erased the disk and how we went through the process. So that means parity is valid and everything's good. Now if you did see any sync errors here, just let the parity sync finish all the way through and it will correct them. But if you've done everything properly, then hopefully you won't see any at all. Anyway, I'm going to cancel this. And so basically, that's it. It's really easy to reformat a disk in the array. So now if I scroll down here in CFS Master, we can see there's now two different Z pools. We've got the one called Cache here, because it's the name of the cache pool here. And the second pool is called Disk1, taking its name from obviously Disk1 at the top here. Now at the moment obviously there's no data sets here because it's a freshly formatted drive. So I'm going to create run ready for the next video. To do that I'm going to go to shares here. I'm going to click add share and I'm going to call it ZFS hyphen backups. Primary storage I want it to be the array. Now for included disks I only want it to be my ZFS disk one. That's important so I'm going to select that. I don't want any secondary storage and I'm going to click add share. Okay, so with that done, obviously let's click on done and let's go to the main tab again. And if we scroll down here now, we can see we've got our ZFS backups data set. And in the other Z pool, we've got all of these data sets here, which in the next video, we're going to replicate across into this data set here. Therefore backing up all of our app data onto the array but that's the next video. Anyway guys, that's it for now. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. Now I'm really looking forward to showing you the next video with the CFS replication. But if you enjoyed this video, then well, please as always hit that like button. As all YouTubers say, apparently it helps the algorithm. And if you know anyone who might also find this video useful and like it, then please share it with them. And I want to give a big thank you to all of my Patreons and supporters out there. Without you guys, I really wouldn't be able to make these videos. And I just want to really thank you for all of your help and support. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good. And I'll catch you in the next video.